Ravens, and boy, did they blow out the Browns on Sunday. Blah, blah. But the win came with a little bit of criticism. Lamar Jackson was still in the game with Baltimore up by 32 with 10 minutes to go. He dropped back to pass three times and was sacked once before getting pulled later in the fourth quarter. John Harbaugh didn't regret his decision to leave Lamar Jackson in the game, however. Let's take a look. We're not going to just react to every criticism and say, well, you know, we could take him out of the game at halftime, too. That might keep him safer, too, but we're not going to do that. It's just a criticism that you guys can keep asking me about, and I'm going to keep telling you the same thing. And I think if you study football and you look at what other teams do, you'll see that just people don't do that. Joined by LeVar, mm. L.A. is good to see you, my guy. But Marcel, <laughs> yes. should John Harbaugh be criticized for this? Nope. Not at all. And I'm glad John Harbaugh is not only responding to this, but kind of saying it with his chest. And he's actually factually correct. Uh, this world we live in right now. What's wrong one with thing it? I hate. What's wrong with it? Of a many of things I hate, but I love more than I hate, is result-based criticism. I hate result-based criticism. I only listen to decision-based criticism. But let me give you an example of result-based criticism. My brother-in-law, Lafayette, <laughs> I'll be sitting there watching the game with Lafayette. He's sitting there quiet. I'm sitting there quiet. We just eating. I got munchos. He got Doritos. We chilling. And then you can see all of a sudden Lamar Jackson take a sack. And then all of a sudden my brother-in-law Lafayette would sit there and say, see, that's what I'm talking about. Why is he still in the game? Take him out. And I was like, what you mean what you talking about? You just said that. You are responding to what you saw and then acting like you saw it coming. John Harbaugh is correct. They ran a statistic on... 11 quarterbacks last year that won games by 30 or more points. Starting the fourth quarter, nine of those starting quarterbacks were still in the game. But let's take it back to my years, personalized experience. We used to play against Peyton Manning twice a year, every single year. And, and Peyton Manning, second year on, was rolling. Up big, up big. It didn't matter. Peyton Manning was still out there, satisfying not only his ego and his stats, but it made the coach feel good. So in moments like this, when you're like, oh, it's too risky, Everyone is dangerous out there, but not everything is risky. This is a smart situation by John Harbaugh to let his quarterback, who had no offseason and no preseason, go out there, continue to get his muscles going, and start eating. I'm not going to criticize the decision, Marcellus, but I am going to scrutinize the decision, okay. right? I Let's am go. going Let's to look go. at this a little bit more closely. You have to remember... The Ravens and John Harbaugh, they're not like the Clippers. They're not going to blow a big lead. Remember, the Ravens are a little bit wired a little bit differently. The Ravens, you're up 38 to 6. The Browns haven't scored since the first quarter. You up by 32. Why is Lamar still in the game? Y'all weren't going to blow that lead. Now, you said something that I think is a reason he was still in the game, which I have a problem with. You said padding those stats. Yeah, yeah. The problem is, gotta eat, gotta Lamar, eat. you already have your MVPs. Now, I'm not going to say go get another MVP, one. MVP, not MVP. peas. I'm not going to go say don't try to get another one, but at what cost? Marcellus, I don't know about... Uh, I grew up in a Nigerian household. You got to check me on black households. But, you know, in Nigerian households, you got fine china. Mm. And fine china, you keep in that certain cupboard. Mm. And you put that fine china away, and you only bring it out for special occasions. You treat the fine china a little bit differently than you treat your normal plates and your normal utensils. We got to start treating Lamar Jackson like the fine china that he is. <laughs> I need Lamar Jackson to get put away in that certain cupboard late in the game when you already did what you needed to do. We don't need Lamar Jackson to prove nothing else. The dude had already balled. Dude was 20 for 25. He gave you his three touchdowns, no picks. Game, he did his job. If Lamar Jackson can do his job in three quarters, he doesn't need to play that fourth quarter. I'm not scrutinizing John Harbaugh. I'm not criticizing John Harbaugh's decision. That's not what I'm going to do. Mm. But I am going to scrutinize it because I want to look at it a little bit more closely. If Lamar was only in the game to pad his stats, that to me is problematic. Y'all got bigger goals this year. Lamar has said he has bigger goals this year than individual goals. Fake news, fake news, fake news. No criticisms needed. Yes. And let me tell you something. Last time I checked, the NFL... That's the highest level of playing a full contact sport that, by the way, the only level that you get paid that I know of uh, for your services. So the fine fine China reference is no good, Emmanuel. And the reason why it's no good is because <laughs> it, though. You, you fine China is is brittle. It's 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 not sturdy. It breaks mm. easy. Mm. We can't look at a football player at a certain position and just immediately assume Preach. that they can't handle the the brutal force 
in the game of football. Like that's that's not that's not realistic. What also isn't realistic is what John totally touched on and I think was very relevant to the to the conversation. And you touched on it, Marcellus. Why are we acting as though there is this this written rule or expectation that you get to a certain point, you got to take them out? Like you're saying, okay, well, the lead might have got away. Did y'all see the the Philadelphia uh, Washington game? A lead mm. can get away from you. Did you watch the Super Bowl mm. last year? A mm. lead can get away from you. So mm. if you're talking about in week one, week one, it was what 26, 20, 24 to six. In the first half, the game ends up being 38 to six. Have we ever stopped to think in week one as they move forward because the Browns sh are showing that they're not very much better than what they were last year, that the way you score and how you play is going to have to be much better than what it is against this Cleveland Browns team. So you have to get that work in. It's not about so much taking it easy or saving him in terms of playing against the Cleveland Browns. It's preparing him for better competition that they're going to see moving forward. So I don't think you take into to this the mentality of get them in and get them out. You got to get your work. Here's my issue, LeVar, and again, I, I'm not criticizing it, but we do got to scrutinize it. We have to look at it closer. Every coach has treated these Lamar Jackson type of quarterbacks similarly. Everyone has. But none of these coaches have won Super Bowls with these Lamar Jackson type of quarterbacks. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say it's because they've treated them all the same, but maybe we should take a little bit different of an approach this time around. We saw what happened with the Mike Vicks, and, and you could argue that Mike Vick didn't have the talent to win a Super Bowl. Along with his legal issues, Mike Vick also had some injury issues. We clearly saw what happened with Rob Griffin. We've seen what's happened with Cam Newton. Maybe, just maybe, it would behoove us all to treat Lamar Jackson a little bit differently. At the point in which the Ravens go out and score with 13 minutes in the fourth quarter to go up 38 to 6. Baker Mayfield has shown that, well, he's Baker Mayfield. And so he's not about oh, to come you back. Off him, At the point in which all that has happened, I feel like we should use a little bit of discernment and say, you know what? Risk reward. Okay, the reward, Lamar Jackson goes and throws for another touchdown pass and has four on the day. But the risk, something bad happens. You can't play the game of football out of fear, no. But you can play the game of football out of logic. You can play the game of football out of historical caution. And rather than trying to win an award on one game, you try to win a Lombardi trophy at the end of the season. That is why I scrutinize the decision. Because Jim Harbaugh had nothing to gain and everything John. to lose. Yeah, John yeah, Harbaugh yeah, yeah. had nothing to gain and everything. Hey, big dogs, chill out. Chill out. Uh, Acho has forgotten that I'm he played the game of football. Okay. Uh, even John Harbaugh said, well, I could have took him out at halftime, too, and I ain't do that. Damn it. What the hell y'all talking about? Y'all know exactly when the game is over, no matter what the score is. I'm going to take you into a locker room at halftime, both locker rooms at halftime, and tell me if I'm lying, Acho. Tell me if I'm lying, LeVar Arrington. You're in Baltimore's locker room. What's the score? 24 to 6, right? What is the first thing you hear some corny dude on your team say? If we don't let the score, score zero. zero. If we don't, <laughs> zero, zero. You're right. Zero, I, I, zero. I digress. Zero, zero is the score. Then somebody cornier than him says, if we don't let them score, they can't win. They can't win. <laughs> Now let's travel 37 feet to the oh. other side where there's the Cleveland locker room. You know what they say? If they score One 24, out of time. then we can score 24. <laughs> one at a time, y'all. Get a stop, I get the ball, again. one at a time. Oh. Corniest is one at a time. And then somebody else like, they score 24, we can score 24. John Harbaugh has to manage that. But in all seriousness, guys, we all know that confidence is a muscle and it needs flexing. So if I'm going to build up the confidence of my quarterback who didn't have the same offseason, a quarterback that is still maturing despite being an MVP, in all seriousness, he needs to go out there and sharpen his knife, even if it's against this dull surface called the Cleveland Browns. Now, marry that to what Acho just said in terms of how good he is, but this, which I didn't ask you to qualify, but this type of quarterback <laughs> like Lamar Jackson, which he drove home, and tying that up with the confidence that you're talking about, that odor that you just can't shake off, right? Mm, mm. That's the reason why you got to play them, Macho. Yeah. You don't take them out, you don't stop them. That mentality that you heard, that passion that you saw coming out of Harbaugh when he was delivering his to his critics, don't, don't judge me on this, is the same mentality and mindset that you're going to need if you're going to get over that hump that they seem to have stumbled on so far with Lamar Jackson and other Lamar Jackson-type <laughs> that have stumbled upon in right. the past. So you got to play them. 
You got to play him. You got to send that message not only to him, but like you said, Marcella, you got to send that message to the entire outfit. This is a collective body of thing. A collective, I always say a collective body of belief is unstoppable. So if this is an individual deal, then you know, you, you look at it that way. But this is the ultimate team sport. Mm. And by keeping him in there and working on it and saying our mentality is not only to win games, to finish games and dominate games, you don't turn that on 